Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, the New Age Superman, the Nigerian Barbarian. I made that last one up. He has dominated the NBA and is probably the most dominant player in the world right now. Often we don't look at recent players or current players in terms of all-time rankings until they're old. But with Giannis, it's just impossible. We've, we've talked about centers. We slightly talked about point guards, but I guess it's time to talk about power forwards. Giannis, where do you rank? My name's OQ, let's talk about it. Giannis Sina Ugo Antetokounmpo was born in Athens, Greece to Nigerian immigrant parents. Grew up in poverty, but picked up a basketball for the first time in 2008. By 2013, he was drafted to the Milwaukee Bucks which means with the third pick, the Wizards decided to pick Otto Porter Jr. and skipped out on CJ McCollum, even KCP and Giannis Antetokounmpo. <sighs> Tired of the Wizards. <laughs> quickly, quickly, before we get into it, I know Giannis has a come up story that's amazing. He's come from nothing. But this man is a genetic freak. He's six foot 11 with a seven foot four wingspan. So he, he can inspire you, but if you're not 6'11 with a 7'4 wingspan, you're not going to have the same level of career as he handed down to the combo. Now, before we put him against the best power forwards of all time, who are the top five power forwards of all time? For me, it's Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki, Karl Malone, Kevin Garnett and Charles Barkley. That's not in order, by the way. When we talk greatest, we have to be able to separate the individual accolades and the team accolades. The most important individual accolade is the MVP, the most valuable player. Giannis Antetokounmpo has two MVPs. That's the same number as Tim Duncan and Karl Malone. Charles Barkley has one MVP. Dirk Nowitzki has one MVP. And Kevin Garnett ha also has one MVP. So in terms of that individual accolade, Giannis is on par, he's on par with Tim Duncan and he's on par with Karl Malone. But let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the defense. In terms of defense, how many DPOYs does Giannis have? Giannis has one Defensive Player of the Year, which he actually won the same season he won one of his MVPs. Only three players in NBA history have ever done. Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Giannis Antetokounmpo, which puts him in great standing in terms of DPOY and greatest player of all time, let alone greatest power forward of all time. So for the rest of the power forwards, how many DPOYs do they have? Well, Tim Duncan is probably the best defensive player ever to never win a defensive player of the year. Dirk Nowitzki is not a good defender. Kevin Garnett has a DPOI. Charles Barkley wasn't a great defender either. And Karl Malone was a good defender, but wasn't good enough to go beyond just first team all defensive and become DPOI. I mean, he played with Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman. It's pretty hard to get DPOI over them. Giannis also has one. So in terms of that, he's level with Kevin Garnett. And the difference with Giannis is Giannis is in the running every single year for that Defensive Player of the Year. Every single year you will see the candidates for Defensive Player of the Year and Giannis will be getting at least a few votes. And the thing with Giannis also is Giannis, hot take here, Giannis is probably for my money the best help defender of all time. I think he surpassed Hakeem Olajuwon in that sense. But either way, it's him and Hakeem Olajuwon. He's a cunt. But back to Giannis. Defensively, he's top three out of those power forwards. Tim Duncan probably should have a DPOI, and we know that Kevin Garnett was an amazing defender. So we put him top three in terms of power forwards for defensive prowess. Now, how about offensively? you could get out of this video without an advanced stat. Now we've talked about offensive rating before. Offensive rating is the amount of points a player's team scores with them on the floor per 100 possessions. So let's go through every single one of them. For Dirk Nowitzki, his offensive rating across his career was 115.7. For Karl, you know what, I don't really want to talk about Karl Malone. So for the rest of the video, we're just going to change Karl Malone's name to Steve. So anytime I say the name Steve, I'm talking about that guy, yeah? So I'm talking about Steve. Steve had an offensive rating across his career while he was on the floor of 112.8. Tim Duncan had an offensive rating of 109.7. 
Kevin Garnett had an offensive rating of 110. Charles Barkley had an offensive rating of 119.3. Speaking about Charles Barkley, I think we need to have a conversation about just how good Charles Barkley was. Offensively, he was a monster and he's one of the best rebounders, period, of all time. And he was scoring at such a high volume, incredibly efficiently. Like his career true shooting percentage is 61.6. Anything above a 60 for a season is elite and he was had a true shooting percentage of 61.6%. Giannis's offensive rating is 115.9, meaning he was only eclipsed by Charles Barkley. So if we're looking at offensive rating, he might be considered top two or maybe top three because I reckon Steve doesn't give him enough credit, especially during the later stage of his career, but he's definitely top three offensively as well. So the offensive rating, he was only second to the round mound rebound. I think that's a terrible nickname, by the way. Whoever gave him that nickname is terrible. I like Sir Charles, I like Chuck, but round mound of rebound, that is bad. Now let's move on to the most important thing, winning. For years and years and years and years, Giannis has been clowned over and over and over and over again because he hasn't been able to win. He was loyal to the Bucks, he signed a Supermax with the Bucks, stayed in a small market and gave them the loyalty because they drafted him. But in the end, he won. Finals MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. In 2021, Giannis achieved the big one. He won a championship with the Milwaukee Bucks and won finals MVP. He averaged 35.2 points, 13.2 rebounds and five assists in his playoff run and became alongside Shaquille O'Neal the only players to have back-to-back -back 40 point double doubles in an NBA finals as he slapped the hell out of Chris Paul, Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns. A truly, truly historic run. But if we're talking about championships in general, Tim Duncan clears everybody else with five championships. Charles Barkley has none, Dirk Nowitzki has one, Kevin Garnett has one, and Steve is probably the best NBA player without an NBA championship. In conclusion, let's take it all and put it together. Defensively, elite. Offensively, elite. Rings, elite. Longevity, given a few years. My best power forwards of all time, in order, as it goes, drum roll please. At number six, I have Charles Barkley. At number five, I have Steve. In terms of Steve, it's more to do with winning. This is a bit of bias coming in as well. Steve can sit at number five. At number four, I have Giannis Antetokounmpo at number three, Kevin Garnett, number two, Dirk Nowitzki, and number one, Tibby Duncan. But let me just emphasize, I think by the end of his career, Giannis will probably be a top two power forward of all time. He's challenging Tim Duncan for that number one spot. It's just he hasn't got the longevity. He has seven all-star appearances right now and seven all-NBA, or six all-NBA appearances right now. By the end of the season, that will be seven as well. So you have to give him a few years to get at least double digit all-star appearances, at least double digit all-NBA appearances. Then by then, Giannis might be the greatest power forward of all time. Giannis came into the NBA as a young Greek boy from Nigerian origin who people had no clue about. He had a miniature frame, but was quite lanky and tall and could not down the three. All of that has changed, <laughs> but Giannis Antetokounmpo could go down in his career as one of the greatest ever power forwards. But will that happen? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Please like, comment and subscribe, and thank you for watching. Boom.